All right, so in the previous um, video clip, we had a chance to see how we can do simple loops. Um, we, we, we saw how we can do a, a, a simple comparison. Um, and then we could jump based on the results of that comparison and it could be an inequality or an equality right we could check to see if i is equal to four i is not equal to four i less than four or i greater than or equal to four um, the i greater than or equal to component um, we'll try to get some practice with later had it been i greater than or equal to let's say six there are pseudo instructions that will allow you to do the greater than or equal to um, branch if greater than or equal to is convenient for something like that. Um, if you're limited to using true 32-bit instructions, then you're going to have to still keep um, an inequality it's comparing a less than or less than or equal to operation. So you're doing something like this. You're looking to see if six is less than or equal to i. Um, that's one way of doing it. The other way of thinking about this, um, the problem with what I just would have tried there is that we still had the, um, the equal to check. So the opposite of i less than six is uh, the opposite of i greater than or equal to six is i less than six. Um, so that's one way of doing a conversion. If you have this i greater than or equal to six, you can do a set on less than immediate. Let's do a translation here. If we're looking at i um, being an index into a variable, right? in order for us to do this type of conditional. It's um, what we're going to do is first have to extract out a sub i. So let's look at that. In order for us to extract out that value, um, with arrays typically it's going to take more than one instruction to get that value out of the array. So um, with arrays the pattern goes like this. Whatever the index is, you're looking to multiply that value, that value by four. The simplest way for us to multiply an index or an, an any value by four is to do a shift left logical. Um, and the reason being, as a quick, um, let's see if we can do a quick 45 second reminder. If you do something like this, let's say we have a 12. If I shift it left once, the two values go over there, and then we backfill with a 0. And so what was a 12 now becomes 16 and 8, a 24. And if we do a second shift left, then those bits shift again, and so now we're looking at a 16 and 32, which becomes a 48. So when we take a 12 and shift it left twice, 12 shifted left twice is the same thing as 12 times 2 squared. So every time we shift it left, like if it had been 12 shifted left three times, it's the same thing as 12 times 2 cubed. If it had been 12 shifted left four times, it would have been 12 times 2 to the fourth. So we want to multiply the index by 4. Um, and so if you look at a sub i, right, if you recall that within an array um, in an earlier lecture, each one of the array elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, each one of the array elements will sit on a multiple of 4. 
and we'll take up four bytes. So 0, 4, 8, 12, that's where your array elements are going to sit. So element sub 0 will be in a certain byte position offset from the beginning. Element sub 1 will be at 4 bytes away. Element sub 2 will be 8 bytes away. Element sub 3 will be 12 bytes away. So based on the index, if I multiply the index by 4, I know how far away that um, array element is from the beginning of the array. So that's why we have to multiply the index by 4. So let's see if we can continue on with this then. Let's multiply an index by 4. i is s1. Um, and so I'm going to store the result inside of a temporary register. i is s1. So that value times 4 is going to be sitting there inside of t0. Now that I have that value, um, I know how far away a sub i is, right? I know how far that away that element is from the beginning of the array. So I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add t0 to the address of the beginning of the array, and I'll store it in some temporary register. So notice this pattern. And now that I have the address, final address of the element, I can use that to do a load word to pull that element out of memory. So I'm going to use T1 and with no additional offset. So I'll use T1 and I'll pull them into another temporary register. Now I used T0, T1, and T2, but I could have repeatedly used, you know, T0 um, since it, no other um, variable had claimed it was being used to represent that. Let's go back. All right. So now this SAL is a common pattern that's required to extract an element out of memory. So inside of T2 now, inside of T2, register T2 is a sub i, so I have the value. Now that I have it, I want to do a comparison with uh, a sub i and k. And if a sub i is not equal to k, so I'll try a branch if not equal, if a sub i, which is a t inside of T2, if he's not equal to k, which is inside of register S3, if they're not equal, then I want to exit the while loop. Otherwise, if they are equal, continue on to the next line, and it looks like it's an add immediate. I is an S1. And I'll add 2. And then once I've done the addition, I want to go back up to the top or go back up to the while loop and do the conditional. So I'll say jump. I'll put the word top or sometimes I'll use the word while, but I have to make sure that I have some place to go. And so this is the top of the while loop. And so that's how you would do a while loop that involves an array an array element. So I see this really is um, kind of one, that's the first part, get it out of the array, usually three lines. Two is the, um, the jump or the branching. Um, three is whatever's inside the, the while loop. And then you got to be a little bit careful with remembering to go back up to the top of that while loop um, so that you repeat. Um, so your while loops in general should have um, both a branch that represents the initial testing and then a jump, um, which is 
uh, what happens after the statement within the while loop. So those two should go together, some type of branch and then some type of jump. And I say some type of because there's more than one way to do it, but this is certainly a way that should work. I don't see any mistakes here. So that's how you would translate a simple while loop.